Hello everyone, in this video I am going to briefly explain you about object oriented programming concepts. First of all, let's talk about OOP also known as object oriented programming. Let's go to our first slide. Procedural programming is about writing a procedures or methods that perform operations on data, while object oriented programming is about creating objects that contain both data and methods. Object-oriented programming is faster and easier to execute and it provides a clear structure for the programs and also it helps to keep the Java code dry and makes the code easier to maintain, modify and debug. WP makes it possible to create full reusable applications with less code and shorter development time. As you can see, there are four basic concepts of object-oriented programming Encapsulation, Inheritance, Polymorphism and Abstraction. First of all, let's discuss about Encapsulation. Encapsulation is one of the most fundamental concepts in object-oriented programming. Encapsulation is a mechanism to wrap up variables and methods together as a single unit. It is a process of hiding information details and protecting data and behavior of the object. The encapsulate class is easy to test, so it is also better for unit testing. The meaning of encapsulation is to make sure that the sensitive data is hidden from the user. To achieve this, you must declare class variables attributes as private, provide public get and set methods to access and update the value of private variables. By definition, encapsulation describes the idea of bundling data and methods that work on the data within one unit, like a class in Java. This concept is also often used to hide the internal representation or state of an object from the outside. This is called information hiding. For example, consider the following bank account class with deposit and show balance methods. This is the bank class. As you can see, these are the methods that are used in this bank account. Now suppose a hacker managed to gain access to the code of your bank account. Now he tries to deposit amount 100 into your account by two ways. In the first approach, he tries to deposit an invalid amount, say minus 100, into your bank account by manipulating the code. This is that code. Now the question is, is this possible? Let's see if that is possible. Usually a variable in a class are set as a private as shown below. It can only be accessed with the methods defined in the class. No other class or object can access it. As you can see, if a variable set as private and like this, it can be only accessed with the methods defined in the class. Alright. If a data member is private, it means it can only be accessed within the same class. No outside class can access private data member or variable of other class. So in our case, the hacker cannot deposit amount uh, like minus 100 to your account. Now let's see the second approach. Hacker's first approach is fail to deposit the amount. Next he tries to deposit the amount minus 100 by using deposit method. Now he is using deposit method uh, like this. But the method implementation has checked for the negative values, so the second approach also fails. Therefore, you never expose your data to an external party, which makes your application secure. As you can see, the entire code, this entire code is like a capsule. And you can only communicate through the messages. Hence the name encapsulation. If you want to achieve a lesser degree of encapsulation, you can use modifiers like protected or public. With encapsulation, developers can change one part of the code easily without affecting the other. There are several advantages of encapsulation. Let's see. Encapsulation is binding the data with its related functionalities. Here, functionality means methods and data means variables. So we keep variables and methods in one place. That place is class. Class is the base for encapsulation. With Java encapsulation, you can hide restricted access to critical data members in your code, which improves security. As we discussed earlier, if a data member is declared private, then it can be only accessed within the same class. No outside class can access data member of the other class. However, if you need to access these variables, you have to use public getter and setter methods these getter and setter methods are two conventional methods used to retrieve and update values of a variable 
they are mainly used to create, modify, delete and view the variable values. The setter method is used to update in the values and the getter method is used for reading or retrieving the values. They are also known as the accessor and the mutator. Uh, now let's go to our next object oriented programming concept inheritance inheritance is the process by which one object can acquire the properties of another as you can see in this picture the child inherits the properties of parent different kinds of objects often have a certain amount in common with each other for example mountain bikes road bikes and tandem bikes all share the characteristics of bicycle like current speed current gear Yet each also defines an additional feature that makes them different. Tandem bicycles have two seats and two sets of handlebars. Road bikes have drop handlebars. Some mountain bikes have additional chain ring giving them the lower gear ratio. Object-oriented program allows the classes to inherit commonly used state and behavior from other classes. In this example, bicycle now becomes the super class of mountain bike, road bike and tandem bike. In the Java programming language, each class is allowed to have one direct superclass, and each superclass has the potential for unlimited number of subclasses. On the basis of class, there can be three types of inheritance, single, multi-level and hierarchical. When a class inherits another class, it is known as a single inheritance. When there is a chain of inheritance, it is known as a multi-level inheritance. When two or more classes inherit a single class, it is known as a hierarchical inheritance. Java inheritance is a mechanism in which one class acquires the property of another class. In Java, when an is a relationship exists between two classes, we use inheritance. The parent class is called a superclass and the inherited class is called a subclass. The keyword extends is used by the subclass to inherit the feature of the superclass. As you can see, extend. As you can see, in here, the surgeon is the subclass and the doctor is the superclass. Inheritance is very important because it leads to the reusability of the code. Now let's go to the polymorphism concept. Polymorphism means many forms. It occurs when we have many classes that are related to each other by inheritance. Like we specified in the previous chapter, inheritance lets us inherit attributes and methods from another class. Polymorphism uses those methods to perform different tasks. This allows us to perform a single action in different ways. For example, think of a superclass called animal that has a method called animal sound. Subclasses of animals could be pigs, cats and dogs, etc. And they also have their own implementation of an animal sound. This is the Java code. As you can see, this is the superclass animal and the subclass cat and the subclass dog. Both of these subclasses has their own animal sound method and the superclass also have its own animal sound. As you can see this method is inherited by both cat class and subclass dog. But the subclasses gives us different outputs. As you can see the cat makes the sound like this and the animal sound method in dog subclass gives another output. Like I said before, the methods inherited from the superclass can be used for different tasks. I will give you another example for polymorphism. Imagine you have a smartphone for communication. The communication mode you choose could be anything. It can be called a text message, a picture message, mail, etc. So the goal is common, that is communication, but their approach is different. This is called polymorphism. Method overriding. Method overriding is a redefining superclass method in subclass. There are rules for overriding. The method signature, method name, parameter list, and the return type have to be matched exactly. The overriding method can widen the accessibility but not narrow it. If it is a private in the base class, the child class can make it public but not vice versa. Now let's go to our next concept, abstraction. Data abstraction is the process of hiding certain details and showing only the essential information to the user. ATM is a real-time example for abstraction in Java. Abstraction can be achieved with either abstract classes or interfaces. 
the abstract keyword is run access modifier used for the classes and methods abstract class and abstract method what what is abstract class abstract class is a type of class in object oriented programming that declare one or more abstract methods these classes can have abstract method as well as concrete methods a normal class cannot have a abstract method an abstract class is a class that contains at least one abstract method what is an abstract method abstract method is a method that has just the method definition but does not contain implementation a method without a body is known as an abstract method it must be declared in abstract class the abstract method will never be final because of the abstract class must be implement all the abstract methods the main purpose of the abstraction is hiding the unnecessary details from the users. Abstraction is selecting data from a larger pool to show only relevant details of the object to the user. It helps in reducing programming complexity and the efforts. It is one of the most important concepts of object-oriented programming. An abstract class can have both abstract and regular methods uh, like this. Public abstract void animal sound, public void sleep. Uh, as you can see in this example, it is not possible to create an object of an animal class like this. It will show an error. This code will generate an error. Now suppose you want to create a banking application and you are asked to collect all the information about your customer. There are chances that you will come up with following information about the customer. Uh, these are the information but not all of this information is required to create a banking application so you need to select the only useful information for your banking application from this pool uh, data like name address tax information etc since we have selected the information from large pool the process is referred to as abstraction in double op However, the same information once extracted can be used for a wide range of applications. For instance, you can use the same data for hospital application, job portal application, etc. with little or no more modification. Hence, it becomes your master data. This is an advantage of abstraction in double OP. The main benefit of using abstraction in programming is that it allows you to group several related classes as siblings. Abstraction in an object-oriented program helps to reduce the complexity of the design and implementation process of software. So those are the basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.